Welcome to the Killing Floor Games semi-finals. This is game two. This is the team Synergy who qualified for the semi-finals by coming second in the quarter-final bracket B with a time of 22 minutes 51 on Waterworks. I'm Grail and joining me tonight is Egg. Hi everybody, great to be back. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this one. Synergy, the previous winners, came surprisingly second in the uh, quarter-final bracket, although by a mere six seconds. So. I guess that doesn't really mean that much. Should be a good match though. Uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to seeing another Sharp Heavy team go in. Although they haven't quite picked all their perks yet. Two Sharps and a demo so far. Odds are it'll be a third Sharp, I reckon. Yeah, that's what I'm betting on as well. Uh, I think it might get down to the camp spot though. Maybe this time they'll get for a slightly more close, close combat action. Uh, they're having some issues with our uh, mushroom head. Ah, uh, they got lost. Plenty of time. Yeah, gives us more time to uh, chat. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And yep, you called it. Three sharps in the demo. It's the same loadout as the uh, as last time, isn't it? It is. That's what they played on Waterworks. And when they were doing well in the previous tournament as Reapers Death Squad, they were also taking their maximum number of Here's uh, some cash, guys. Someone fairly regularly. This tends to, tends to suggest to me that they're going to be looking for... Oh, what's that? One sec. Uh, suggest to me they're going to be looking for an open spot. Though, they held on Waterworks on a fairly tight spot, so... Who knows? Well, certainly one thing nice thing about the crossbow is, unless something's really right in your face, it's still pretty effective. It doesn't have to be miles away. It's not like a, it's not like a massive zoom on the scope. Yep, okay, so what they have got here, two crossbows and a musket, and Mushroom Head used a musket when they played their first game in this tournament on mana. Now, the musket's an interesting choice. It will flinch a scrake, but it's slow. Um, it won't stun a scrake. I'm also not really... Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the musket in this situation, with one exception. If Mushroom Head was to carry a spare grenade launcher, a spare M79 for Reaper, then it's worthwhile. If he's not carrying a spare M79, then I don't see the real advantage to it over a crossbow or over an EBR. I can I can see to a point why they would do it, to have a sharp who can kind of clear trash, but an EBR can do that and can flinch lock scrakes and take out flesh pounds at a pinch better than the musket can. Hmm. I have to say that for me the uh, lack of piercing power is pretty much a game over for the for the musket in my book. Yep. One really nice thing about playing sharp is you can shoot straight through stuff with almost any weapon. Agreed. Now if they were carrying that musket, uh, that M79, they could skip an entire trader. Because with the musket and two pistols like the MK23 and the hand cannon, he would still have four kilos of room left over, which is Quite coincidentally, the weight of an M79, they could skip an entire trader if they went down that route. Uh, maybe that's what they done. They didn't quite catch it at the beginning, but uh, there was a bit of money changing hands. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do it on. Yeah, they didn't do it on uh, mana though. So that would suggest to me they're not doing it here. But we'll see how they go. They might be intending to do it this time. This is an interesting spot they got here. It's a risky spot. I don't know how it's going to go for speed-wise. But any time where you've got... Yeah. Any time where you've got a 180 degree line of sight between your, your holes, always is going to be risky. Yeah, it's a big field of view to have to cover. It is. Especially when they've only got the three sharps. Two sharps can cover one, but it's sharp and they don't have to cover the other. They'll clearly need a floater, and that might be Mushroom Head. Yeah, I found in tournament games when people go for the musket, uh, it's usually the musket player that's sort of floats between the front lines. Right. That looked like a pretty cool free run, though. It was. It was a good time. It yeah, was faster, fast. I think. Faster, I think, than what MGC did on their wave, wave one, who were the previous game. Are they Robbie, changing their location? Pillars. They are? Yeah, roger that. Right, this is a, a common spot in pub games. 
Yeah, I've camped here before in bug games. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a nice spot. So possibly the strategy Behind was to um, go to the fastest but riskiest spot for the first wave. And uh, as it gets a bit more dangerous, uh, play a little bit safer. Yeah, or they might be designed to hug traders. Oh, that's kill. certainly possible too. Yeah, that was... Really no trouble. I really, like, I really like that Reaper's wearing armor as well, the only one to wear armor. Important, in my mind, that a demo has armor. Especially as a level 2, he's going to take a lot of splash damage if things go wrong. And he's the one person they probably can't afford to re-equip. Uh, yeah, that M32 really does cost a lot of money. Yep. Yeah, you can't be affording to try and purchase that every wave. You'll end up with nothing. So this tends to be a safer but slower spot. So it'll be interesting to see how they progress. Yeah, it's certainly a calculated risk to, uh, well, balance risk and uh, the time. But as I said earlier, uh, maybe it's being driven by the trader locations. They've skipped a reasonable amount of trader time already, so perhaps they have they up in the trader time. That's right. They were very close to this spot from the last trade. It was just down those stairs. So if they're going to if they're going to hug traders, they will end up with a lot of skip time, which might uh, might give them a big advantage at the end. That might be what they're aiming for. Yeah, I've just been tracking Mushroom Head, and yeah, certainly floating between the two front lines. So I think that's the objective of the musket player. Yep. Yeah, now that I've said that, he's stayed on one side. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, no, he's moving over. Note that Mushroom Head also only has the musket and the hand cannon, which means he's only carrying 9 kilos of stuff. He's got 6 kilos of stuff he can carry still. Humanix has also only got a hand cannon and crossbow, and Matt has a hand cannon, MK23 and crossbow. So two of their sharps are only carrying the hand cannon as a sidearm. I would have expected to see them each with two sidearms then, so they can easily flick between them instead of having to reload. But this is probably how they went in the earlier way, early games. So what what they know, I guess, is what they're comfortable with and what they do. Certainly if it was uh, Hell on Earth, where there'd be more Zeds, certainly be inclined to get the extra ammo, but perhaps because it's four-player suicidal. Just pretty gutsy from Mushroom there. Uh, yeah, four-player nice suicidal range. means there's just not enough Zeds to require that much ammo. Yeah, I just like to have that, I guess, Burn sharp rubber, so that pillars. I can switch between weapons instead of having to reload. Yeah, you just in case to things go wrong. Yep, they're shifting position again. They're going back to their original no spot. Minute 57 saved so far. That's good times. Flesh pan right on their tail. Well, Killed good team cleanly. Everyone backed off, uh, backed off at the same time. Yeah, no panic. Yeah, no, no one engaged. Don't, don't Everyone just it. ran. No they, did, they did well. See, the other advantage, if they did have those second sidearms and Mushroom Head was carrying them 79, full trader skip after this, and they stay in this one spot. Yeah, that would give them good control over their camp location. Yeah, camp location and a minute save time when you only got doing this many waves. It's a massive advantage. I tend to find, from trying it, that trader skips can be a Bit of a delicate experience though. If the team coordination yeah, you is need spot to be, on, things can get out of pretty quickly. You need to have planned it well in advance and know exactly what you're yeah, doing. Yep. Who's carrying what, who's changing what weapon at what time. They're doing very well in this spot. And it looks like there's not much coming from the other direction. Matt is pretty much holding it by himself. And that's really good if you can have one player that you're confident in and they're clearly confident in Matt's capabilities uh, to hold one spot. Because they are doing uh, yeah, a long we'll time here. Matt is capable of in uh, the previous rounds. It's a very good shot. Yes, he is. And they're doing a really good time. 
they're doing this nice and comfortably at the moment. Sixty odd left, and they're eight minutes fifteen. Reloading. Oh, a flesh pound at the back. Good it's possible they could have more than three minutes skip trade time. They're doing very well, and especially if they hug those spots. So, yeah. Mart was just asking about trade of time they might sp skip. Mart has take, uh, Matt has taken a bit of a pounding at the back there, but he's still going and the wave's almost over. Yeah, if they, if they hug trade spots, they're going to be doing really well here with this trade of skip time. And at the end of the day, that's going to be a big boon for the close trader. So I'd assume that they'd head back to that spot. Reaper's oh, buying pipe crap, bombs. Run. Again, Humanix has still only got the one sidearm. Mushroom Head still only has the musket and hand Watch cannon. I'm reloading. Flesh pound coming up the end near the demo. Boom! Once again, cleaned up, no problem. It's a pretty even uh, kill distribution, apart from maybe Humanix. But that's the busiest side, so I take Humanix's job really is to uh, pick up some of the medium zets like the Sirens and the uh, Sirens and Husks. Yes, so I reckon, yeah, Mushroom Head is doing the trash up there. And stealing the kills. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. I think they might have practiced that because Humanix took two shots and then just backed right off. Didn't yeah, even look like they were going for the third. So. No, he just let Mushroom Head take it. Probably uh, communicated in their team speak as well. Good communication yeah. to come out for a successful Looked like team. a practice move. They were doing it in earlier games, I noticed as well, especially, well, not so much on Waterworks, that was pretty hectic, uh, but on Manor they would do it, Mu Mushroom Head would take that third shot to put the Scrakes down, if there was room. That's certainly a good way to save on bolts. Mushroom Head agrees. <laughs> and it's faster and safer, especially if another Scrake turns up. So it's, it's a good tactic. And these guys are rocking. I'm going to say sub 20 time here. Reloading. Yep, oh, that's that move again. I reckon, we're yeah. going to be at, I reckon we're going to be looking at 18 and a half minutes, possibly. What do you reckon? Uh, I would have said 19 and change, but... Um... Alright, see how we go. They're smashing it. Mushroom Head gets that scrape kill again after it gets stunned. Flesh Panda at the back. My apologies, just some debris. So this is a tough spot to hold, so um, due to the fact that it is that 180 degree line of sight, so their performance here can't be uh, undervalued. It is a phenomenal performance so far. Yeah, it's been very impressive. Uh, and did I see that right? Clay Reaper put down his pipe bombs already? Yes, he's put some down for wave 10, clearly. So he had them ready to go for wave 10, so that he'll probably drop some up the other end and you'll have them ready. Uh, we did see on Waterworks, Reaper with his pipe bomb getting the double flesh pound kill at the beginning of wave 10. Uh, clearly a practice move. 
Yeah, I wonder if we're going to see something like that again. How are they going to hold here again, though? One would suggest they are. That suggests to me as well they might be looking to hold Can't back at other spots for the pat, perhaps. So the pipes are there just enough to watch if they survive. Well, possibly they found that when they finish they have excess money, so might as well just put them down anyway. Yeah, might as well, I guess. Here comes double flesh pan towards the pipes. Boom, second flesh pan's trailing. And he's in his rage animation. And he's dead. No must, no fuss. Taken care of. Alright, Mushroom Head's been pushed back by a siren and a gore fast. But they've taken care of it. Team's moving to heal very quickly. He's back to full health already. Yeah, team heal's critical, and they've done well. Fresh Matt was down to about 50% health as well, and he's also back to full. Being a sharp where Fresh Matt and Mushroom are at the moment, so or especially where Fresh Matt is holding, is tricky. Um, due to the elevation, so again, he's doing very well there. And it looks like they're pretty much relying on Matt to hold a position no matter where they are. Getting a little bit of help from Mushroom, but yeah, he is the uh, that that focal point wherever he is. Well, it's certainly providing a very solid foundation. I mean, it's pretty quiet there at the moment, but not really anything's getting past him at all. And yeah, you're right, those stairs are very tricky for a shark to get head headshots on. The question is, do we think we'll see Reaper with a crossbow again? Double flush pound? Both killed. Bunch of sirens up. behind them. Oh, Rage Scrake though. And dealt with. Jeez, I was pretty busy there for a bit. Yep, got a little bit hectic. But it's all under control now. Doesn't really seem to have bothered these guys, actually. They've, they've never no. been pushed back from their front line. No, they got pushed back a little bit early, but they recouped. That was on the right-hand side. And you'll notice that their armor is... For Matt and for Reaper, fully intact, and they've only lost a little bit on the other guys, so most of the damage that they have been suffering has been from Sirens. I think we'll find on this map, given that there's so many corners, it's quite hard to avoid Siren damage. It is. They just ran into one then. We're looking at 16 minutes at the end of Wave 10. Fantastic time. That is an amazing time, isn't it? Hold up! Loads of and looks like Reaper's gone the crossbow again. Two bloody so it's demo with the crossbow. Nice and the dual hand cannons. Yeah. Matt's running around at the moment by himself. Has he lost his team? Behind you, idiot! I'll show you all. Or is he going to try and leave the team? 
Is he going to try and lead the pat to the team? Looks like he's going to. Yep. Don't fit it. I'm trying to help. Behind you, you tosser. And those pipes are still there from before, so clearly that was part of the plan. Well, that's a very active shooting. Paddy didn't even get close before he had to run away again. Man on! No, it was good. Here he comes back. Screw that idea! Use of those uh, hand cannons at point blank range. Really useful. Getting headshots with a crossbow like that's hard. But that was cleanly done. Well, not entirely cleanly, they took a couple of scratches, but yeah, they forced him away pretty smoothly. Coming back for the final, or the penultimate heal, I guess. And yeah, we have three players with Well, two players with full armor, one with half. Yep, that's his final heal. Final heal, so they should be taking him pretty soon. Fresh magic got smashed. Oh, nicely done. Wow. Four hit points on Mushroom Head. That's cutting it close. Look at that trade to save time. Three minutes. Very impressive.